Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is another top five. And today we are going to look at the top five web browsers for Linux. Of course, most of these web browsers are also available on other platforms. And most of the browsers that you use on your other platforms are available on Linux. So the reason I wanted to cover this is if somebody wants to move from a Mac or a PC over to Linux, what web browsers are available? You will find that the most common web browsers are still available for Linux, and some of those are actually installed by default. Um, some of the new Linux distros are starting to install uh, basically browser installers to let you choose which one you want, and then just look at the philosophy of the Linux distro to see which one they're likely to have. Most Linux distros are going to be installed with Firefox. Um, although other browsers are certainly an option. So what we're going to do is we are going to use my solid K build because this is the virtual machine I still have and I did not want to install all these browsers across uh, my main computer here. So we're going to be looking at the browsers on solid K, which of course this is a KDE version of the solid system, which is based on uh, Debian stable, which is currently Debian 9. Same computer that's kind of behind me. You can't see much of it, but uh, it's back there. And uh, what we're going to do here is uh, I've went ahead and installed all of the browsers that we're going to look at on here. Now on Linux, um, you you will have a um, uh, an application uh, installer here, software stores or whatever you might want to call them. And uh, in KDE and Debian, it's going to be Discover, which is this one. If you're on an Ubuntu, you'll have like Ubuntu Software Center, things like that. And you can just come down here and, and you can do various searches. So in this case, if you look at uh, applications, web browsers, these are the main web browsers that it will, it will have. Now there's other ones that you can install. This is not the all-inclusive list. Of course, for the Linux people that uh, know more about what they're doing, I find it faster to just launch up a console and install what you want to install. So this is how I installed um, um, uh, one of the browsers we're going to look at. And then I actually I downloaded the other ones. I installed some of them through the Software Center. So our first browser, our number one browser, is going to be Firefox. Now Firefox will come in a few different brands. You'll see basic Firefox, you'll see Firefox ESR, which is what we have here. You'll also see Ice Weasel, weasel depending on, on where you are. And um, all of these are just various forms of Firefox. The ESR is basically like a long-term build. So when you load up Firefox, of course, Firefox is one of those most known browsers, so most people understand what it is and how it is. You can create a uh, Firefox account. It will sync things between your different instances, whether you're on a, uh, you know, different computers or mobile devices. You have the option to, uh, to create the accounts. Um, now, on Linux, different distros will have a few different implementations. Some people like those, some people don't. In this case, we have... Uh, um, uh, uBlock Origin or MuBlock Origin, depending on what you want to say. And uh, this guy here is basically, it's just uh, uh, essentially like an ad blocker. This is installed by default. There's other ones that you can install as well. This is just a basic extension. Uh, you'll also see here, it looks like they've kept the uh, search engines. I can't remember if I, no, I didn't, don't think I changed any of these. Looks like they did change the search engines a little bit up to start page. We also have DuckDuckGo, Google, uh, Debian packages, Wikipedia, and Yahoo as our search functions. So those will change depending on um, your distro where you're installing the system from. And uh, so Firefox is not one that we need to mention a whole lot about because um, it's pretty much the same across various platforms. Now the next browser we'll look at is the family of browsers including Chrome and Chromium. So Chrome over here, of course, you recognize it from the colors. Chromium has the same type of logo, just in different shades of blue. Now a lot of people use Chrome, and I personally don't. I switched to Linux because I was concerned with the privacy, primarily the privacy found in Windows 10. So I am not going to use a browser from the number one data collection company possibly behind Microsoft. So while I have Google installed, uh, Chrome installed on many of my computers, it's actually not a browser I usually uh, use. In fact, I think right now I only have it installed on, um, on a Windows computer for some development stuff and on a Mac computer for some development stuff. I do have it over here in the virtual box. This is just the basic, uh, the basic Google Chrome. No, we don't want to make it that. No, we do not want to send stuff to Google. So this is 
this is Google Chrome, um, exactly what you'd be used to. And, um, uh, you know, you can do all the sign-ins, extensions, everything is the same. Now, some distros, uh, particularly some of your newer distros or your trendier distros might have Google Chrome installed on their own repository. If you do not, then you just need to go over to Google's site, just type in uh, for Google Chrome and download and install Google Chrome and what you will find is it will detect your platform. You can select another platform here. So when you hit the download, um, you have to pick either the Deb package for Debian or Ubuntu or an RPM for a Fedora OpenSUSE. So just download the appropriate package. Make sure you're not downloading this from any place other than Google um, if you do want to install it. So just to accept to install, of course, you're agreeing to their terms and, uh, and conditions. In this case, just download it. It will open it up in a package installer and you can just go ahead and install it. I don't think I'm going to say anything else on Chrome right now just because I think everyone's essentially aware of what Chrome is. Now Chromium is, I do use Chromium on my computers. This is the, the uh, browser I stay logged into on my YouTube accounts just so I don't have to keep on logging in, logging out, logging in, logging out. Um, I use Firefox for everything else, but I do use uh, Chromium for this. So what Chromium is, and if you're new to Linux, you might consider using Chromium instead of using Chrome. All it is is it is an open source version of Chrome that does not have, um, it does not have all of Google's proprietary stuff. So we can audit what it's doing better than we can Chrome. Now you might use Chrome instead in a, in a case where you need something in the proprietary DRMs or stuff like that, maybe Netflix, whatever else. I think Firefox is getting to the point where it can do Netflix now. But on Linux for a long time, if you wanted to watch, uh, watch something either on Amazon Prime or on Netflix, you would need to do it through Chrome. So that is a reason why you might want to use Chrome. Or in my case, I'm a developer, you might do it for that. Actually, I think my, uh, my main development um, Linux Mint computer also has Chrome installed. I'm pretty sure. Now my next pick, uh, my next pick is, uh, is not going to work for everybody, but it is Midori. Um, so I was looking for various browsers so that I wanted to have on a, any given computer, I wanted another browser that I could use and stay logged into my other YouTube account for the home cooking and the Christian channel. Um, well, um, you know, th th those individual ones. That one I don't mind logging in and logging out and logging in and logging out a little bit. I just don't want that connected to, um, to my other accounts. And so... I, in, I use Midori. Now, what I have found is that on some computers, Midori works really well. On some computers, it crashes. So on, um, on my Linux Mint KDE computer, Midori is my backup browser behind Firefox. Um, on this Debian KDE, Midori doesn't work. And so for whatever reason, um, I had to switch over to another browser. So what we have inside here, um, it is just a very lightweight browser. We do have some preferences, so we can pick the font lists, the um, uh, behaviors. So you can see what all the different options are inside of here. It's pretty standard stuff. This is you know, deleting old cookies, so you can delete cookies after, after a short period of time. Maybe after a week is a good thing. Um, you can only accept cookies from the sites you visit, so that is... Um, that is a nice default, so it's basically blocking third-party uh, cookies, and um, so that's what it is doing. You do have some different extensions that you can click on these, so there are things like an advertisement blocker extensions, cookie manager, things like this. So there are a lot of different extensions in here, and then of course here's your uh, various uh, file types. So this one here is, it is a decent, uh, a decent system. We have DuckDuckGo as the default search engine right now. Um, we have Debian, Debian bugs. Let's see, I don't see like start page. Let's see if we can actually add something else. Let's go ahead and add. Um, all right, I have to look up exactly how we're gonna add that. Sometimes adding them is a little bit weird. But here we can just go ahead and just search for something. Let's go for startpage.com. All right, so here you can see that on this computer it is working, it is working pretty good. So 
this is uh, this is actually uh, working better than it did on on uh, my Debian system over here. In which case, it was uh, not working well at all. But this is something if you do need a lightweight browser, and uh, in my case, I run multiple different browsers for different things. So here you can see um, uh, you can see what uh, uh, it is working pretty quickly. It is working pretty well. I'm pleased to see that. So that is my third pick is Midori. Uh, my fourth pick, what I use as my backup web browser on, uh, on my uh, Debian system is actually Conqueror. So Conqueror is a KDE specific browser. Um, I'm pretty sure you could probably install it on other systems as well. I've just never tried. One of the things I really like about it um, is if you go into look at the settings and you can configure it, there is a lot of neat stuff under the hood of Conqueror. Um, it's not as lightweight of a browser, although I don't notice any speed differences. It actually works pretty well. We can show an introduction page. You can show bookmarks. Um, you can do, uh, I believe you should be able to do the last page you, you were on. Um, we do have um, a lot of different options as far as how you view it. Um, Here's your navigation services. And then what I liked is you will have automatic ad block filters put in here. I didn't, don't see an option here to uh, up, you know, add all of them all at once, but it's not too bad to go in and just go ahead and turn all these guys on. So if you watch my video, um, my last tinfoil hat time video where I um, talked about um, the automatic tracking of everything, um, I recommend turning these on until companies stop tracking so much stuff that uh, I do recommend turning on some of these some of these blockers. Um, so you can do that. There are uh, a lot of things in there. Here's web shortcuts. Um, there's some cache history and cookies. The cookie is nice. You can uh, enable cookies. Uh, you can see what we have here. Um, you can accept all cookies. You can only accept cookies from the originating server. So dechecking. Uh, Dechecking this will accept third-party cookies. Checking this will block third-party cookies, so you can save those. Um, other things I really liked is the Java and the JavaScript. I'm not sure why they're clumped together, other than possibly the fact that uh, novices at this stuff um, uh, don't realize that those are two completely different things. Oh. Kitty wants to come up and say hi. Hello, everybody. Use cool web browsers. They rock. All right. So. Java, you can enable Java globally. I would disable this unless you happen to know you, that you need Java because Java is a massive security risk. JavaScript, you can also enable it or disable it globally, or you can do individual type things. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that you can do. And then, of course, we have some plugins over here. Here's some various plugins. So it looks like it can take plugins from Firefox and Mozilla applications is what it looks like. I've not installed plugins or, or things. So those are, uh, that's my fourth. My fifth pick for browsers is actually going to be Opera. I'm not sure what the save it, it as much is now. Um, there was a period of time on one of my computers that it will. Um, it was not working as well. It was bought out by uh, by another company, and so it was. Uh, some people are saying it's starting to work really well. Some people are not quite sure. Um, not sure why? No. WhatsApp and Facebook stuff on here. This is creepy. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe I'll have to take Opera off my list. I haven't used Opera for a while. Uh, the reason I used to use Opera, I'll have to see if it's still on here, is it used to have its own uh, torrent client. Um, if I needed torrents prior to using Linux, I would actually just use uh, Opera. I'm not sure if it still has that or not, but it is uh, one of the more popular browsers out there. Um, it does look like, uh, I mean, it does look like it's working a little bit better than it used to be on the old system. So maybe it is moving back up since it was um, since it was bought out recently. It is a little annoying. It's like, no, I do not want to install your extension. I'm sure that's probably Amazon, but we'll see. Tag Opera Desktop. Oh, that's interesting. Um, you see how it has this tag here? This is actually the code that uh, anything you buy from the Opera site is going to send a portion of your sale down through um, through uh, through Opera's Amazon account. So 
That's interesting. Um, curious. I don't know. I'll have to reconsider if I want opera on my list of top fives or not. Um, that is getting a little a little freaky to me. Uh, the fact we have Facebook Messenger allow in over here and, and look at this. Allow this thing access to the camera and microphone. Ugh. Same with WhatsApp. Like these are those are things I don't want on my systems. So I don't know. I think I might just have to start taking uh, Opera off. I've not looked at Opera for a while. Um, but it is interesting. It keeps on forcing me back to this particular thing. Anybody know more about Opera? What's going on with the state of this uh, this this system? It's kind of scaring me here. It's like Google is my default browser. There's my window. Let's look at our settings. So we can block ads. That's neat. I like that. So there's different lists. Ooh, lots of lists. Ad block warning removal. Fun. Woo! Block them all. All right. Good enough. Um, so you can see that you can open it on a specific start page. You can continue where you left off. You can set specific pages. You can make it your uh, your default. Um, setting your download location. See what happens when we enable wallpapers. Never done that before. So there you can create an account. I can pick my different search engines. All right. So it does look like it is uh, performing a whole lot better than I have seen it perform in the past. Um, so that is actually good news. I don't see the torrent client. I'm not sure if it still exists in here or not. Um, anymore, I just use transmission on Linux Mint. But um, uh, regardless, we'll go ahead and keep Opera there in my top five for now. But uh, let me know what your thoughts are on it. That's, there's some things in there that are starting to concern me a little bit more uh, than it has in the past. So let me know what you think. Uh, but anyway, there were my uh, top five browsers, and I picked those based on the usability, how easy they were to install, things like that. And I looked at a lot of different browsers um, prior to coming up with, with the top lists that I would use. So thanks for watching, everybody. If you would like to help support us, check out uh, the current ways to support us at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. And... Um, also, you might check out my old um, Browser Wars video. I will uh, put a card in there to that. You can check out that video where we just looked at a lot of different browsers on a live stream one day. So uh, that would be a neat option. And uh, as of the time of this video, we do have on an Amazon account of our own you can use. Just don't use Opera, apparently. It looks like it hijacks it. And um, also, um, uh, we have the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.